Hello guys, Vino here and welcome to this Vino Blanc production and in this video I'm going to be playing through Resident Evil 2 a board game. Not the entire game, I'm going to be playing through a scenario. Please bear with me in this video guys, this is my first multi-cam setup. Not only am I recording with my main camera, but you can see to my left here I've got my phone that is also recording the table. I've got my watch here so I can see what my phone is recording. I'm recording the audio through my phone because that doesn't cut out when it comes to his recording, whereas my camera will cut out after 30 minutes. That's also going to introduce its own challenge is every 30 minutes I need to restart <laughs> this um, this main camera, sync back up the audio and carry on the video from there. I've also reduced both cameras down to 720p just so I can get the most amount of footage on because some board games or some scenarios of Resident Evil 2 can take a while to play through. With that being said, I do have with me a bottle of Coke. Very nice indeed. And we're gonna get straight into the game itself. So I know that that is sort of to one side, but if I do that, you can now see it um, the right way up, so to speak. So if we open this up. So this is done by Steamforged Games, which is actually a UK based board game publisher, distributor, what have you. This is the first thing you're presented with, and I really like this. This game contains scenes of explicit violence and gore. Any fan of Resident Evil, the video games, will know what that's all about. This is in a little bit of a state of... So this is the scenario book, so I'll be picking one of the scenarios out of there in a moment. This is the rule book. I haven't actually read through the rule book just yet. I might read it through on camera. We'll see how I'm feeling. This is the grenade launcher ammo indicator. Just there, it's a little bit stiff, but you can see that it that it does actually, where are we? Yeah, there we go. It does actually record how much ammo you've got for that particular gun. These are some of the item cards. They have sort of fallen out. Most of this seems okay, but if we take off this part here and we look at the bottom, we are then presented with all of these different tiles. There's the Magnum ammo. I need the handgun. That's very important because that's, you can tell this is a lot easier to move. This is the main weapon in the game. Essentially, this... I do believe this is a scenario counter or a escalation counter. Um, so there are certain cards that if you're playing certain scenarios, increase the escalation of the game, basically the scenario, and basically the highly escalation zombies and monsters and kind of stuff get more abilities simply put we've also got this rising fear token but anyway there's a lot of different tiles there's this which i'm gonna need to track health item bits and bobs what else we got <laughs> So I do know how to play the game somewhat because I have watched a few playthroughs of this on YouTube, but obviously this is the first time of me actually getting into the game itself. Grenade Launcher has decided to <laughs> fall apart, but we have that one anyway. So yeah, I suppose, and here's some more different tokens in there. So I suppose the only thing really left to do is to look at the rule book so let's have a quick look through the rule book so introduction so this is going to set the scene earlier this year a bizarre incident occurred in the rk mountains the R. Clay Mountains, I do apologize, on the outskirts of an American suburb named Raccoon City. After receiving several reports of missing persons, the Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars <laughs> Unit immediately began investigating the affair. It was revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise known as Umbrella, incorporated for use in the bioweapon experiments. After the destruction of the secret laboratory discovered under the sprawling Spencer Mansion, the case was closed. 
but the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished. Night has fallen over Rackham City, and the shroud of darkness hides the horrors within. The viral outbreak has brought its once prosperous town to its knees, infecting the populace and turning them into ravenous undead monsters. On faltering steps, they stagger through the streets, hunting the last remaining survivors. Those brave souls trying to flee in the ruined city, but the undead are not the only predators in this forsaken place. Within the darkness are the more dangerous adversaries proud, awaiting the unwary or foolish enough to stray across their path. Into this nightmare you are now thrown, another survivor desperately trying to escape with your life. Along the way you will need to aid others with you, battle enemies unknown and search for the sinister truth behind the disaster that has befallen Wrecking City. So Resident Evil 2, the board game, is a cooperative game of survival horror for one to four players set in the overrun streets of the buildings of Raccoon City. To survive, players must work together to complete the objectives of the scenario they are playing, with each success bring them one, bringing them one step closer to escaping the nightmare. Players will need to explore for cute clues and items in order to progress with each resource they must they must find must be carefully managed. Not the best worded. They'll need to learn when to attack enemies and when to evade. Remember, fighting foes is not the only way to survive. The time is short before the city is overrun. Right, so that does set the scene rather well. And if we now look at this, this tells you the contents of this. So you have the Birkin Stage 3, the G-Mutant, all of the zombies, zombies and the characters you can play, all of the tower elements and sustained effect and gameplay tokens. Yes, you can see that on that camera. Rather cool. You've got tension cards, boss behavior cards, character profile cards, boss reference cards, locked door cards, all the good stuff, all the dials and a oh that's a boss health dial so that thing that i thought was an escalation counter is actually a boss health dial okay so that's useful to know and we have all of the different bits and bobs it's the character profiles so you get a character profile card you then get the health monitor so to speak and all of their different items item cards are pretty self-explanatory equip you got handgun ammo lock pick herbs a red key card nice picture of a zombie there oh there's also an inventory limit on the card as well so okay so it shows you how much they can actually um hold in i think the this was the first one that they, was it the first one they made? And then they did three, then one. <laughs> um, in later iterations of this, they did sort of rejigger some of this. So it's a bit more seamless. So this is the playing area. We have different spawn modes for the zombies and what have you. The range. All attacks in Resident Evil 2, the board game, have a range representing how many squares away they may be used. And a tip with range 0 can only be used in the same square as the model, whereas range 2 can be made up to two squares away. That makes perfect sense. And it just shows you sort of a representation there of, you know, the large models, small models, and all that lovely stuff. And of course, you do have a do you have a character card for or any reference cards as it tells you gameplay the basics so the action phase move open close search trade use attack i know most of the different, not scenarios, but most of the, there we go. So there's actually a scenario. So scenario 1A, brief, getting to the police department. So this is actually the, one of the scenarios. So playing scenario 1A. So it actually tells you how to set up the various additional game rules. So encounter levels, terrain elements, 
So you can introduce these or not introduce these if you want to. I think it says here, well done, looks like you survived your first scenario. And now you have some experience of how to play the game. Next, we're going to move on to more advanced rules. So basically, this is almost like a tutorial, <laughs> if you will, to ease you into the game, if you will. And actually tells you that for the different... Um, for the different um, decks, so item deck A has one handgun bullets, two green herbs. Deck B has a shotgun and an attention deck, 16 green cards, one echo amber card, and one red card. Hey, we might as well start getting that all set up then. In this scenario, the counters have arrived in Raccoon City, only to find it overrun. With the streets no longer safe, they must make their way to the Raccoon City Police Department, which would be much more secure. So they thought. <laughs> right, so. I'm not sure it denotes in the instructions of how I identify the tiles at the end of the day. This is definitely not the uh, the main RPD. That's the main RPD, but I don't know where the the entrance is. I wish these tiles had more elements on them, which sort of denoted, identified them a bit better. Because I'm a little bit, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit confused as to how we have this set up. Character sheet, zombie, item deck A, deck B, green tile. So you see these have a red border around them. I'm gonna make an assumption, could be wrong, that the ones we're looking for have a green border. But I'm looking through this and I don't see any green borders at the moment. I've been dripped. No. Oh, that's a staircase. Staircase. Door. poison token oh, okay don't worry about finding tiles with the exact artwork shown in the brief any tiles can be used as long as they're the right shape well there you go that answers that question quite nicely so we need one of these tiles the entrance and we need a door I'm guessing we need a door for each of those these are the characters so probably no surprise but I'm going to be playing as Leon Kennedy that's Barry I do believe there he is. There's Mr. Mr. Leon Kennedy. Leon S. Kennedy. We're going to put him, we're going to put Barry back. I believe that's Barry. We're going to need a number of these zombies, but I'm probably going to put the that back in here in a moment, just so I can keep track of all of that. We're going to take this off of there. So let's have a look in here. Whoa, whoa. This is obviously Claire Redfield. We need Leon Ash Kennedy. So. Zombie, 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 zombie. So these are zombie cards. I 
Oh, it's not um, Barry, it's Robert Kendo, the owner of the gun store. More zombie cards, you've got the boss. There he is, there's Leon Kennedy. Leon S. Kennedy. He was hiding at the bottom. How dilly darn dare he? Berserk swing. A modified zombie. I'm not sure I'm going to like the look of that one. Claire Redfield. Robert Kendo. Ada Wong. I'm going to put those two one side because I don't think I'm going to be facing a boss in this scenario considering it is essentially the tutorial phase. Leon S. Kennedy called under fire. Once per activation Leon may use an item while one or more Under fire, once per activation, Leo may use an item while one or more enemies are in his square without making an evade roll. And it shows you that he can use a handgun, shotgun, and the magnum. But I do believe you only start with the handgun in this specific scenario. And if we now grab out all of these. So I've just spent that little while organizing the item cards. I've got the deck of A cards. We have the deck of B cards and the deck of S cards. As far as I understand it for this specific scenario, you basically pick out the cards you're gonna be using it. But when you play other scenarios with additional rules, you shuffle those basically and draw from the top. But I think in this particular scenario, they sort of, uh, choice pick essentially what you're going to be using so item deck b needs a shotgun so we need to look for the shotgun and there's the shotgun so we'll put the shotgun to one side and item deck a which is this one handgun bullets and a green herb so we have a green herb and hand cumbers. There we go. And the rest we're going to put away. So I'm just going to put B, A, S. I'm going to put these nicely back into here. And then we're going to take these, we're going to take the two A's and I'm just going to shuffle them back and forth. So I don't know which is which. That's the two A's and the B we know is the shotgun. There's no real getting away <laughs> from that as it were. I do believe you get is it three or four actions per, per round, so to speak. Put that uh, over there. In this, we can get access to the monsters and what have you. Oh, so you can start on either two, two, or one. So you can start in either of those locations if you wish to. I have been, I have sort of, I do know that this game, when it comes to these things, um, uh, uh, omin uh, ominity, anonymity, where the, where the rules are vague, basically. Um, it does try and explain them. It gets better as the series goes on, as the games go on, but it's not brilliant straight away. So successfully read a Plymouth roll, at least one of that or that, at least one, yeah. If an evade roll fails, the character is hit and suffers the effects list of the enemy's attack profile. I think in this scenario we only get zombies, which is 
very thankful on that one. Yeah, zombies. You only get zombies in this specific one. So that's very useful. Tension phase, we have the tension deck. Each scenario is able to. The ball game utilizes a unique tension deck representing both the growing sense of unease and urgency felt by the counters and unexpected events which might befall them. Tension deck, so you do actually use the tension deck in this scenario. Which are these cards just here? Again, some of them the wrong way around. So we're going to, okay. And then we take obviously these as well. I'm just gonna slip these in. So there's one of these and one of these. We'll flip, slip that in here. And then the undead ambush card in there. And then we shuffle. Right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take a cut because the my main camera is about to run out of recording time. I'm gonna set up the board, read through the instructions, and then come back to you guys once I have everything set up, I believe. Hello guys, and I'm back. I've read through the rules. As I said, I've already watched some gameplay of this anyway, so I sort of understand. I think that has I think that has fallen off. I think that went there. There we go. As I said, I have watched some gameplay of this already on YouTube, so it sort of wasn't going in completely blind. We're gonna put that there so it doesn't get lost. So I've set up the board. So we have all the zombies, all the doors remain closed at the beginning of the game. I've gone with Leon S. Kennedy. As I said, I've set my handgun ammo to 15 as instructed by the handgun card just there. I have the zombie card as well, so I know what the zombies do. Um, and of course we have my lovely health meter just there. And I put a green herb into the, into the item deck here we're going to put the item decks just over here so you guys can see them a little bit better i will bring them up to a camera cam them to the camera when i get them we're going to take a squig of drink it's four actions per turn so i'm going to have a look in the scenario one last time and see where i want to where i want to go and we'll see what the goal <laughs> of the scenario is. So, playing scenario 1A. Now the setup is complete, it's time to start the game. The player, success, the player successfully complete the scenario if all the characters leave the playing area via the door marked as the RPD entrance, which is this one just here. Once a player has left the playing area, they cannot activate. They've reached the safety of the police department and can only cheer the other allies on. Resident Evil 2, the ball game, is fully cooperative. If any character's health track marker drops below danger, the players fail the scenario and must reset and try again. So you have to work together to make sure that doesn't happen. By keeping zombies away from each other the best that they can during the activations, pick a player to go first using the rules for the activations. See if the characters can make it to Raccoon Police Department. Equidistant targets and rule conflicts. On occasion, two or more characters will be the same distance from the enemy that is making a move or reaction. Multiple characters will be in range with the enemy's basic attack or reaction, or there are multiple options for the game effect. In situations like these, the active character is always prioritized as the target. If the situation or effect cannot be resolved during this rule, the active player's controlling player may choose how to proceed, selecting one of the available options. So basically we can start either here or we can start here obviously one of those options is more difficult than the other and i'm just playing this as a sort of tutorial so we are going to start right there there we go at the back of the um, instruction booklet 
rule book, sorry, is a nice reference sheet, so that's rather good. I'm going to keep that to one side so I can keep a nice reference of how things work. I'm going to take out all of the various dice. Uh, so these are for the characters. These are for the enemies. You can see there is no evade, no nothing. And I'm going to use this to keep track of how many, how many, um, what's the word, turns I've, I've, I've got actions. So we're going to put that to four. I've got four actions at the beginning of each turn. So the first thing I'm going to do, I suppose, is I'm going to take two actions and move to here. So that's one, two. We're going to switch this to two. I'm going to use one of my actions to fire at this zombie. So what I then need to do is I then need to bring my ammo counter down to 14. We're going to fire a shot at this zombie and we're going to see if I can hit this zombie. So I hit it once. Uh, no, that's if you're being attacked. This is to, this is to hit. Oh, so there you go. I got one shot, which is a push. So this is actually to push the zombie in a direction. Because on the handgun card, if you get one, it's a push. So we push, I push the zombie back there. Um, so that brings me down to one. No. I don't know my, I think that's one, to be honest. And um, we are going to move here. And that is my, that's my go, basically. So next up is the reaction phase. And the way the reaction phase works, for every adjacent tile that has an open door, as far as I'm aware, the um, zombie reacts. I actually think it's even a closed door because they can still hear gunshots through doors because they just heard, you know, the gunshot and what have you. Obviously this zombie is going to take one step towards me, obviously, because he was in the thingy. These zombies, these aren't on adjacent, adjacent tiles are connected by doors. So this zombie is going to move, they can't move diagonal as far as I'm aware. So this zombie is going to move like so. Actually, I'm going to double check that. Can you move diagonally? That is a very good question going to be movement somewhere. Move. When a model moves, place it in any adjacent square, including diagonally, which is not blocked. Okay, so you can move diagonally. So that zombie would move diagonally like so. And I believe that would be it. There's no other. Oh, this zombie would move this way to move towards, obviously, Liam Kennedy, because obviously they again heard the gunshot. That then resets my my actions back to four. I don't really have a lot of choice, really, than to, again to fire at this zombie and hope, really hope, that I get. So we're going to use an ammo and we're going to see if we can get this complete and utter miss, I do believe, on that one. We're just going to double check that one. So yeah, so the there's red attack dice, blue attack dice. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Does it say which one's blue or So you definitely use blue when you're evading. I assume you use red when you're attacking. Doesn't actually stay in the instructions, which is slightly annoying. I'm not gonna lie. 
I think these are for the enemies and these are for, but what if you get a, 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 an evade? <laughs> that doesn't really make sense on that one. We're just gonna stick with what I think. So that was a complete and utter miss. It whistles past the, the zombie and embeds itself into the wall. So I've got no choice, really. I really have to try and get rid of this zombie as best possible. So we're gonna take another shot. We're now down to 12 and we're gonna see if we can get this one. Hey! So you can see by the handgun that two of those means that is a shot. Zombies only have one health, so that zombie is now dead. We're gonna move that zombie um, off the board. That brings me down to two. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move to this square here with one action. The second action, I'm going to open this door. Leon's gonna go, ah, zombie. Um, and that is now my go. Obviously there is now a reaction phase. This zombie is gonna move into the same square as Leon. It only takes one, one action. However, it's now in the same square as Leon. To be able to move out of that square, I need to make an evade, uh, an evade roll. Um, this zombie moves this way. These zombies, stay as they are because again it's not an adjacent tile that zombie stays where it is so we go back to me here so what i'm going to try and do here i'm going to attack this zombie with the knife on this occasion and we're going to see if we can actually get rid of this zombie so i've actually managed to push this zombie back so we're going to push the zombie to there, which gets it out of my square. So I now don't have to worry about having to try and evade that zombie. So now that gives me three more goes. So I'm gonna take one to go here, one to move there, and the third of my final, of my four actions, to search for this A item. And we're gonna take the top card off of the A deck and it is a herb. So we now have a green herb. We can slip that in there, and that can always become useful. And then we discard the, the A. We then put this back to four, because that's my goes. This zombie moves this way. I just realized I was moving this zombie, but it wasn't an adjacent tile. I'm gonna continue moving it anyway. And this zombie, is not directly adjacent because it's separated by two doors, I've just realized. So that zombie actually stays where it is. I'm gonna take one action to move here, one action to open the door, and then two more to move there, so that's me back to this zombie now does move in this direction because it does actually hear what I'm doing in this area here. So it's like noise and moves over just to here. So I put my counter back to here. Because this is two tiles that way, we don't move that zombie. He now is out of hearing range, <laughs> I assume. Um, so first action that I'm going to perform is to open this door. And I'm gonna go, ah, zombie. We are then going to take a handgun uh, and shot and shoot the zombie. So we're going to go down to 11 and we're going to see if we can shoot the zombie. And there we go. I've actually managed to move the zombie back. So we move it back and I'm going to then use my next final two moves to move. No, final one move because I was there, moved there, opened the door. That's one, two, three. So I'm moving there. So I'm actually within range of the zombie. Zombie gets a reaction, so they move into the same space as myself. So I now need to try and move out of the zombie's range, obviously, and I've got two options. I can either try and move out of the square um, by using an evade, or I can push the zombie back with the knife. I'm thinking I want to try the knife. So let's try to see if we can move this zombie back we're gonna 
try that again. So yeah, I actually managed to move the zombie back. So we're going to move the zombie bear. I'm going to use my last three turns to go one, two, and open this door. Okay. So we're back up to four. Once I keep forgetting to do tension cards. So we're going to do three tension cards in quick succession. One, all clear. Cool. Two. Oh, echoes of darkness. Movement and sounds haunt your steps, foreboding darkness, hiding horror, what lurks within. Place an echoes of darkness token on a tile occupied by the next character to activate. If a character is on the same tile as a token at the beginning of their tension phase, they must draw two additional cards. That would never have happened. Discard the token at the end of the next activation. If the next character activate on is on the same tile as a boss, then has no effect. That would have had no effect anyway, because I would have moved off that and then all clear so i believe that is i think it was three cards let's draw draw another one just in case an echo of darkness um again but if we were to put an echo of darkness um that's rising fear echoes of darkness that one so we put it on here if i start my if i next tension phase i'm on that same square I have an issue, but obviously I'm not going to be on there. But so we're going to go back up to four. To four, I've already opened that door. So I'm then going to use my movement to go one, two, three, four to that one there. The zombies get a reaction phase. That zombie is going to move there. But then I'm just going to use my next uh, a couple of actions to go one open that door and there we go i've escaped and that really is how easy um that scenario is i did start myself in the easier point for this particular scenario i could have started over there and made it a little bit harder for myself but i was just wanted to test out the mechanics um of the game i'm pretty damn certain there is a mechanic i got wrong i think when a zombie comes in the same tile as the same character it can attack but i'll double check that one um but that was relatively easy but i just wanted to use that as a scenario to sort of get used to the game present the game to you guys and sort of show the flow of the game yes i also forgot the tension cards as well but it's all part of learning a game you're going to make mistakes when you far first play a game and there's actually a youtube channel i like watching called ready steady play um in which they quite often make many different mistakes and have to go back a little bit when it comes to various scenarios but there you go that's kind of the flow um of the game how the dice work how the various mechanics um work and all that kind of stuff hopefully you enjoyed that specific scenario and there is definitely going to be um, a scenario going uh, again in the future and i'm probably at some point going to bring out the b file scenario or b file expansion at some point and play with tyrone the tyrant my good friend luke will get that reference but until next time guys please take care and as always enjoy the rest of your day ta -ra.